Alexis. It's Shannon Vador. I am hosting a trip to Europe with my friends, and I just wanted to make it clear that you are not invited. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about The Real Housewives of Orange County, Season 18, Episode 13, You Are Cordially Not Invited. And a couple notes about this episode. It really looks like this has solidified Katie and Jen as like this fan favorite dynamic duo. So as I mentioned before, people love Jen. Like, I don't know, she just seems to have an overwhelming amount of support just judging by like what people are saying online and whatnot and with katie it's been more of like a mixed bag especially earlier this season people thought she was thirsty you know the whole heather drama and whatnot i was always kind of like eh about katie you know what i mean and to be fair i'm not a huge fan of heather dubrow so seeing her like go up against heather was like oh, okay but for the past couple episodes i feel like katie has also been like guarding more favor and yeah people are just saying like oh this is like who emily and gina like try to be just shit like that people really like jen and katie i really enjoyed seeing jen like be ice cold to tamra she tried apologizing to her you know what i mean like because tamra's used to the whole like oh you know get angry say sorry repeat but jen she sees that now and she's like i'm over this bullshit so she's standing firm, so I really love that. And regarding the Alexis Bellino of it all, like, I don't know what she expects, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Shannon doesn't fucking like you. That is your fault, Alexis, you know? And I really wonder if Alexis hadn't, like, ridden for John so damn hard, maybe Shannon would be cooler with it? I don't know. But at the same time, you know, John Jansen clearly dislikes Shannon. Alexis is with him, so like I just feel like it's just not at the same time, why is Alexis wanting to like be in trans good graces? Like pick a fucking lane and stay in it. So I don't get what Alexis like thinks should happen, but you know, whatever. Anyways, the episode kicks off with Katie going to comfort Tamara after she storms off. And notably, Eddie does not move a single muscle. Like he's just sitting there in his fucking blankie, like, it doesn't have to be this way. And it's just like, dude, your wife just stormed off, like, what the fuck? And oddly, once he, like, does get up to leave, and he only did so because Katie was like, hey, Eddie, I think Tamara's ready to go. Like, she was just not having it. Katie tried getting her to, like, come back to the party, but Tamara was just over it. She kept discussing the FBI allegations, yada, yada, yada. So when Eddie finally gets up to go get his fucking wife, he actually, like, shakes Ryan's hand, says, I'm sorry. Like, this whole thing. It's like, so you had all this beef with Ryan earlier in this event, but now, after he gets into it with your wife, now you're gonna be cool with him. Like, I feel like now, like, it would make more sense now to, like, not want to interact with him. You know what I mean? Like, none of this drama has gotten resolved, but I don't know. It's quite odd of Eddie. Like, you're not gonna go run after your wife you're not gonna like i don't know it's kind of quite odd jenna notes that she loves and respects eddie she's known him for a long time she like trained with him all that jazz but she thinks that tamra is just disloyal and she just isn't surprised by this blow up she's like of course tamra blew up like you know we were getting to a good space and now she ruined it that's just what tamra does and when Ryan hears about the continued FBI talk, he explains that one of his good friends is, like, under investigation right now. He goes to Vegas with him a lot. Like, he just kind of gives some context, but without, like, divulging too, too much. It's a legal issue. And Emily's, like, asking him all these questions and whatnot. And the confessional, she's like, I mean, Ryan goes to gamble like it's his job. And remember, when Katie's husband, Matt, asked Ryan what he did for work, Ryan like went this whole tangent like, oh, you know, I'm in real estate development, we do that. Like he couldn't give a straight answer, which is always quite shady. And yeah, Emily's like, what's there to do in Vegas? But like gamble, party. And then she's like, oh, prostitution, it's legal there. But fun fact, so parts of Nevada do have legalized prostitution, but it's all, it's like these um very rural communities, but like in Clark County where Vegas is, it is illegal. And that's where most of the prostitution in Nevada happens. Like, 
Nevada outside of Vegas, Reno, I believe it's, there's also Carson City, but that's like a whole different bag. But basically outside of Vegas and Reno, it's just like Western Utah, you know what I mean? Like it's just like very rural, very deserty, not a whole lot going on. So yeah, like prostitution is legal in Nevada and certain counties, but not where like it's profitable. Like not in Vegas, which is kind of what, where it really only matters. Anyways, we then learned that Shannon's 60th birthday and she goes furniture shopping with Heather and Katie. And we learned that Shannon and Vicky, regarding their two shows that they did for their like two woman like act or whatever, they sold out. So that's really good. You know, they're really nervous about like how this is gonna work. Cause remember the whole thing was like, oh, the Trace Amigas, the Trace Amigas. Well, bitch, now it's only two of you. Like it's a whole, it's very hard to like, you know, remarket yourself and whatnot, but yeah, they sold out, so good for them. And regarding John and Alexis, she believes, giving the lawsuit to People Magazine, Shan thinks it was just to hurt her and make her look bad. And she knows that she just wants to move on. She just wants to close this chapter and move on. And she also knows that John apparently had a prepared statement for People Magazine once they broke up, which is odd for someone who was like bitching about being in the limelight and whatnot. Like you have a prepared statement for People Magazine, like, okay, dude. Katie then gives a rundown of all the drama that occurred at her party. And then we segue to the whole Heather versus Emily situation, which feels like so old at this point, you know what I mean? But. Heather notes that she, you know, never really got a chance to talk to Emily about it. Emily's talking to other people about it, but it's like, Emily tried to talk to you on the side at the party, but you shot her down. But now, Heather's saying that she wants to have a one-on-one -on -one with Emily and really just reassure her that she meant no harm. And later on, Gina clocks that like, Heather's quite, um, What's it like manipulative? Like, um, no, what's the word that she used? Calculated. Gina called Heather calculated for like all of a sudden wanting to talk to Emily. And she's like, Heather just can't be in the moment and like be there for you right then and there. She has to leave. She has to like, you know, talk to her fucking damage control people. And like, then she'll be willing to give grace. And when Heather went up sitting down with Emily later on, she like is very intentionally trying to listen. She's trying to like see Emily's perspective, trying to like console her. And it's like, all of a sudden, and I have to agree with Gina on this. It's like, I don't know. It's like, you can't just like be a good friend in the moment. You have to like mull it over for a week instead. So I don't know about that. We then see Gina have Emily over and she checks out some of the work that she's done in the house. And of course they discuss the shit show that unfolded at Katie's. And they say that Tamara just like can't keep doing this. She can't just keep having three martinis and going off the fucking rails and it's okay. Cause again, that is Tamara's pattern. And people are starting to see that. Namely, Jen and Emily. So they're kind of, what the fuck is Tamara doing? Gina then says that she's kind of nervous about seeing Heather again because apparently Heather is very upset over Gina leaving with Emily at the party. Which is like, I mean, what are you gonna do? Like, Gina is, she's known Emily for longer, you know what I mean? And like, I'm glad Gina left with Emily. Emily needed someone to like, have her back. Like, I don't know. So yeah, Gina feels kind of weird about that. Emily then notes that Heather is claiming that she attacked her, which Emily straight up denies. And she explains, you know, I tried talking to her and she's just trying to shut me down. Like, Heather was the one, you know, egging the situation on. Heather also claims that Emily was like being aggressive, all this jazz, and Emily kind of gets that allegation a lot. And you know, there've been times where she just pops off out of nowhere, but I mean, in this situation, I mean like, Heather continues shutting down conversations. Oh, is that not aggressive? She did to Katie, she did to Emily this season. It's like, I think that's pretty fucking aggressive. Hell, a few seasons ago, not a few seasons ago, but like back when like Heather first came on, she was, quite nasty to Shannon. Like, oh, at least having a mental break. I think that's even more fucking aggressive because you're trying to like fucking like veil this like disdain as if you're caring. You know what I mean? You're trying to veil it with like this veneer of like, oh, I'm concerned about her when you're really just being vindictive. So I don't know. I, I just want to kind of highlight that for a little bit. Emily then notes that she does not want to have a conversation with Heather. She's just like not interested. 
She also explains, like, why she was so triggered by the whole situation, and it's because, like, so she's been feeling herself lately. She'll be posting social media pics, showing, like, her workout progress and whatnot. People are, like, just hating on her in the comment section, which is just, like, public figure social media bullshit, but it's getting to Emily, because, you know, she's always been, like, a lot taller than the other girls, a lot, like, a little bit, like, larger, and so she's, like, been called every name in the book, and it just really got her. And she notes that she wants Heather to see her as a size 6 and not a size 12. And, like, I get it, you know what I mean? Like, I understand, you know, like, um, oh, I feel really good about myself, and then, like, you get left on red, or, like, you know, someone's not interested. It's like, oh, but that's just how life is, you know what I mean? I get how it hurts, but I mean, like, I don't know, like, how much of that is Heather's fault? And granted, Emily acknowledges that, like, she doesn't think Heather is doing it intentionally or maliciously, and Heather also isn't, like, giving Emily, um, the courtesy of, like, hearing her out and, like, trying to understand her. But I mean, like, what really can Heather do other than say, like, oh, shit, you know, my bad, I hear you. So I understand that, but at the same time, you know, Heather is not doing that, and that's what the problem is. And this quick little scene ends with Gina saying that Heather needs to come back down to Earth, and she says that the thin air is affecting her brain. Now, I know Heather is gonna have something to say about that at the reunion. There's no way that's not getting addressed at the reunion. Emily then meets with an exoneree as part of the Innocence Project, or the, the Innocence Center, excuse me. She's, when did she first? I think it was like last season or season before last when she like came on the show, like introducing this charity. She's still doing it. She's working with this man. He was incarcerated for 18 years in regards to an attempted murder conviction he got when he was 15 years old. So like, he was exonerated. It turns out that like, his half-brother let him take the fall, this whole thing. So she's kind of discussing like the work that she's doing and the issues in the justice system. And I love to see this, you know what I mean? It's not like some bullshit, like, oh, uh, homeless, not toothless, like all these other charities. Like, you know, it's something that's actually like impactful, you know, like doing good things. So good for Emily with that. Katie then has a family scene and she discusses her heritage. Again, she was born in South Korea. She was adopted as an infant. Um, her siblings were adopted from Georgia. So like she grew up in an adoptive family. Uh, she was raised like Irish Catholic and stuff. So she was kind of just navigating, reconnecting with her heritage. She was like her daughter taught herself Korean. And Katie also says that for her 40th birthday, she wants to go meet her birth mother. So she was planning on doing that. And it was like a cute little scene of her son, like asking her what her real name is. <laughs> Birth mother? I hope so. What's your real name? Young Wa. It's my real name. Young Wa. Mm -hmm. I love you, Young Wa. <laughs> Next up is Shannon's little tea party birthday, and it looks really nice. Shannon looks really fucking good, so good for her. And Emily, because remember earlier this season, she did like a little boudoir shoot? She brought Shannon along with her. It turns out Shannon also took a photo, so Emily is like, presenting that picture for Shannon on her birthday, so I love to see it. And while getting ready, Jen says that today is about Shannon, but I don't really give two shits about talking to Tamara. Jen is not here for Tamara, and I love it. Once Heather arrives, she asks to chit chat with Emily on the side, and you know, Emily straight up fucking declines, and she confronts Heather for switching it up all of a sudden, though Heather explains that, you know, she just need some time to like, you know, get her stuff together basically. And this is where Gina says that Heather is being calculated. Heather just can't be a friend in the moment. She has to like go strategize and figure out how to best do it. And then that quite shows when you like compare how Heather reacted to uh, Emily at Jen's house. I was like, whose house was that event at? At Jen's house versus how she responds to her at this event. Heather is like being a very active listener, all that jazz. But right now, Emily's not interested. But Heather is like persistent. She's like, can we just talk for a moment? Which again, Emily said, no, why are you like badgering her? But Emily's like, you know what, whatever. I'll hear you out, you know, it is what it is. And Emily opens up and again, Heather is actively listening. You know, she's like, oh, you know, I understand you like, felt like, oh, why am I getting an oversized jacket? It feels like I can't fit into these clothes. Like, 
Heather was really trying to see Emily's perspective, and Heather acknowledges that she can't negate people's feelings, and they agree to move forward, basically. But she also tells Emily, hey, we are friends. If something is bothering you, let me know. Like, what the fuck? So yeah, they agree to move forward, they make that progress, so good for them. And as soon as Tamara arrives, she apologizes to Jen, but she is ice cold. That's Jen, good. I want to apologize. I know we need to talk more about it, but I just want to apologize. I want today to be fun and nice for Shannon, but I just want to say I'm sorry. Okay, well, let's have that discussion. Yeah, another time. for sure. I don't want to have it here, but I don't want it to be awkward. And I don't want us to not make eye contact or anything like that. I love it. Because again, Jen is just exhausted by this pattern, and I love to see it. Because coming off the heels of last season, you know, she was going up against Tamara as well, but she chose to open her heart back up to Tamara. Almost like a, oh, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me type shit. And now Jen is like, no, I see who you really are. I'm over you, which I love to see. Because, you know, like, she's such a sweet person, but now it's like, you know, oh no. Don't mistake my, like, kindness for weakness type shit. Once everyone's there, Shannon makes her grand entrance, and she's the hostess with the mostest, gives everyone these gifts to open up. They have these little, like, knickknacks to hint at the upcoming trip. And we also get Emily presenting her with her, like, big old photo. They're all laughing at how she looks like a madam. And, of course, we then get the trip reveal. I'd like to invite you guys to go to... <laughs> And once the excitement winds down, this man arrives with a birthday bouquet for Shannon that has a card as well. And they're from Alexis Bellino. And it's interesting because like, how did Alexis know where they're going to meet up? How did she know what time to send the bouquet? It's because of Tamara. No doubt in my mind it's because of Tamara. And the bouquet has a literal olive branch. There's a literal olive branch Alexis sending to Shannon. But Shannon thinks that this is nine weeks too late, and Emily agrees with her. How many peace offerings does Alexis want to offer to Shannon while simultaneously being involved in a lawsuit, talking shit about her, making her life hell? I mean, give me a break. Of course, Shannon notes that Alexis's coach, John Jansen, like, ordered her to send this bouquet. And Tamara's like, oh my god, Shannon, really? Why can't Alexis just do this out of the kindness of her heart? Blah, blah, blah. Because it doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, okay, Alexis, you know, whatever. This whole conversation leads to Shan discussing the whole lawsuit situation with the People magazine airing the news out, all that jazz. And Tamara notes that the morning the news broke, Shan actually butt dialed her. Which I'm glad Tamara, like, told her about. But again, like, I feel like everyone's been butt dialed. Like, you know, you take a couple seconds. Hello? Hello? Then you hang up and you like text them, hey, I think you just butt dialed me. Like, you don't fucking stay on the line and eavesdrop. Like, it was just so shitty of her, you know, like, oh my goodness. And Shan notes that she was so upset because People Magazine didn't want to wait for her to like give her own statement. And that's what happens a lot of time. They'll reach out like, oh, hey, do you have a statement to provide? Just so they can say, oh, we reached out. We reached out. But Shan was like, oh, let me call my lawyer, give me like 30 minutes, and they didn't want to wait for her. And of course, she notes that John is just trying to smear her. Shan also notes that she needs to set boundaries with Alexis. She's like, I can't help her being in this group. This is my 60th birthday trip. You bet your fucking ass you're not coming, which, again, to me to how Jen was like standing firm against Tamara. I love that Shannon is standing firm, praising herself, and she's like, no, fuck you, Alexis Bellino. So I love it. And she then reads this text she pre-wrote for Alexis, and it is quite something. Hello, Alexis. It's Shannon Bedore. I am hosting a trip to Europe with my friends, and I just wanted to make it clear that you are not invited. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, Shannon. This is bad. And once Shannon shares this, Katie's like, hey, do you think we can like soften this like just a little bit? But Shannon does not give a flying fuck. She's just like, nope, it is what it is. And Katie and Jen are then like, okay, what if we go break the news to Alexis? And that's what we see in this final scene. Jen and Katie roll up to Alexis's, and they're giving some commentary on their mission, if you will. And then let me get my Diet Coke. She's in a really good mood. I know, but it's not going to last long. And once they share that Alexis's olive branch didn't really sway Shan whatsoever, Alexis is super irritated and frustrated. She's like, 
Why? What else can I do? I'm trying to move forward and make peace in this group. I just keep hitting brick walls. And that's the thing, Alexis. You're trying to, like, make up with Shannon for the sake of the group, but not for the sake of, like, you and Shannon. Like, I don't know. And again, why are you acting brand new? Of course Shannon doesn't want to fucking see you. She doesn't care about this olive branch. Like, you're being weird. Like, dude. And yeah, Jen and Katie then get Alexis to read the text aloud because they're like, I think Shan may have sent you a text message. Why don't you get your phone? And yeah, and they tell her to read it out loud and they pray that it's softened, though it isn't. And Alexis says that she is just done. And she questions what Shan is upset about, what Shan is so hung up on. And it's like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, you and John keep like pushing her, pushing her, pushing her. And it's like, her not inviting you on her birthday trip is like so devastating to you. Like, dude, what the fuck? And Jen and Katie explain, they're like, hey, you know, like this is how Shannon feels. Like it is what it is. And we then see Mr. John Jansen with Alexis Bellino in a confessional just discussing his side of the story. He's like, you know, I leaked the news because the statute of limitations was coming up, like some shit like that. Just trying to explain his side away. You know, like, oh, we're running out of time to do something about it, like, whatever. And the overall consensus is, like, who asked for this? Who asked this man to be on our screen? Like, oh my goodness, people are, like, pissed off about it. Like, I don't want to see him. I want to hear a side of the story, like, blah, blah, blah. He already has Alexis, like, being his guard dog. Like, come on, dude. Going back to the conversation, Jen then asks how the lawsuit was leaked to people. And in the confessional, Jen Ship lies and says, you know what? No, I don't think Alexis had anything to do with it. But the delivery makes you know, like, oh, she's full of shit. Do I think Alexis leaked it? Uh, yeah, I, no, she didn't. Really? Mm -mm. It's weird that she's so upset right now, though. Like, Stop it, go next. And while Jen is trying to be Switzerland, Katie acknowledges that, hey, it's a possibility. Like, Alexis is friendly with the folks over at People. Like, it makes sense. It's possible. So yeah, Alexis then says that she's not gonna be on this group and she is done. And you know, Jen and Katie try comforting her, but Alexis is just not having it. And she actually kicks them out. And Jen has this funny ass reaction. Are we getting kicked out? Thank you for being the horrible communicator of the horrible news. Oh, I've never been kicked out of anyone. <laughs> Wait, I did get evicted. And after kicking them out, Alexis is like, oh, Thank you for being the, the bad bearer of bad news. Like, what are you mad at them for? And yeah, the episode ends with Jen and Katie just like confused as fuck in Alexis's driveway, like heading out. And it's just like, what just happened? So yeah, it was just, I don't know what Alexis wants. It, whatever, girl. But anyways, let me know what you think down in the comment section. Make sure to like and subscribe. And of course, stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching. Bye.